Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome you all for this presentation organized jointly by Women's Federation for Old Peace Europe and Eurasia. I'm Erika, and I'll be the moderator of today's session. Note that we will be recording this session. Uh, and before we begin, I would like to emphasize that this presentation is part of a series of lectures focusing on topics related to identity, health, and relationships. It's based on the International Foundation materials, um, and it aims to pr promote true values among students and to help them build wonderful, happy families in the future. Let's start with a brief introduction of the program. And for that, I'll be sharing my screen with you. Uh, just a moment. Okay. So this curriculum held by the Women's Federation for World Peace covers important aspects of pu puberty, marriage, and personal development. It's designed to engage students and provide them with valuable insights and knowledge. Our presenter today is Mrs. Olga Van Kulinskaya, who will be sharing her experience on this subject for approximately 30 minutes. After her presentation, we will open the floor for, the, for questions and, and uh, discussion. And I encourage you all to participate actively by asking questions and sharing your thoughts after the presentation. You're also invited to write down your questions in the chat box during the presentation. Once the Q&A session concludes, I kindly re request you your feedback on what touched you the most during this presentation and how it can be used for mor moral education in your country. Through this presentation, we hope you can unlock the secrets of true love and deepen your understanding of its prof uh, profound impact on our lives as we shed some light on the difference between true love and falling in love, being that the topic of today's session. Now, with further ado, let's welcome Mrs. Holga Van Kulinskaya, a renowned moral education specialist as, uh, and the Women's Federation for World Peace International Vice President uh, for Eurasia. She is an experienced practitioner who has worked in the field of moral education for um, over 25 years and the author of children's book on moral education. Mrs. Olga is married and the mother of three daughters forming a beautiful family. And with a unique perspective on foster, fostering love and passion and ethical values in our lives, she brings to us a wealth of knowledge and practical insights in what promises to be a thought-provoking session. So let's welcome um, our dear Mrs. Olga. Good evening. Our dear friends and guests, we are very, very grateful that you could join this meeting. Uh, for us, it's really a pleasure uh, to share something that is really uh, in the heart. And I feel uh, actually that this moral education or family education is really crucial now because there are so many people in the world who want to be happy, but people just don't know what happiness really is. When I was a little girl, I would read, uh, you know, different fairy tales about happiness. And sometimes in the fairy tales, there was a bird, like if you find this kind of happiness bird, then you will be happy. <laughs> so people have different ideas how to be happy. But I think this topic that we would like to uh, discuss today, this is actually the key to happiness, because all of us really want to find happiness through love. And this is what we want to talk about. And also, I would like to mention before I start my presentation that we really have been giving this kind of presentations for many, many years. And the motivation to give this kind of presentations mostly to young people, it can be uh, high school children or can be students or young couples. So the motivation is, uh, of course, not just to teach them something, yeah, or to persuade them or to push them to believe something. Our motivation is just to share some information so that they can make their own choice. Yeah, because actually each person has free will, right? And nobody can be pushed. But if there is something valuable, why can't we just share? And then receiving this information, people can just really reflect and think and decide what they really want to do in their lives. This is our motivation to really see more happy people on our planet. That's it. 
no other <laughs> hidden thoughts. So let me just start my presentation because the topic today, just let, uh -huh, do you see it now? Now, yes? Okay, good. So the topic today is uh, the difference between true love and falling in love. I really love this topic. So I think all of you would agree that love is something very, very precious and really amazing feeling that can bring us to happiness. And before I usually start any talk, for example, at school or at college, I usually ask uh, students or high school kids, uh, could you please raise your hands, like those who really believe that true love between one man and one woman is really possible. Can you imagine how many hands are raised? Anyway, now I can talk to you, I can see your reaction. But actually, I can tell you that out of, for example, 30 students in one class, usually you can see five, three, five, sometimes one hand. Why is it so? Because they see the reality. They, they don't see many examples in this world. They don't see many examples of true love. And that's why it's difficult to believe. But then when I ask them second question, okay, I understand, but please raise your hand, those who would like to experience this. So those who would like to see it possible in their lives. Do you know how many hand, hands I can see in class? Sometimes 30, sometimes a little bit less, just because maybe some children are shy and don't want to express so much. But in reality, I think inside, deep inside, we all are striving for true love. We all want to be loved. We all want to love. We all want to trust, to be accepted. Of course, there are some people who can just say, oh, I don't care so much about love. For me, money is most important. Or maybe some people could say, for me, career is most important. Or somebody would say, for me, it's most important to be famous, or like famous actor, for example. Yeah. And I don't care about love. But I think deep inside, this is not something that they feel. Maybe these people are just disappointed and they don't believe anymore. But we all want to have a partner who can, whom we can love truly, whom we can trust fully. Yeah, now I like to make poems, yeah? Yeah, so like that, yeah? So we all need this kind of partner in our life. And if we talk about love, this is really something amazing when two people can become basically one. So they become one in heart, they become one in body, and they can fulfill their most cherished dreams together. And they can become even best friends. Yeah, sometimes people ask me, how do you feel about your husband? First thing that I can say, just it's my experience, I can say, he is my best friend, somebody whom I can trust most. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it good to feel like that? Then, of course, through true love, a new life can be born. And how wonderful this would be if each child born on this planet would be born as a fruit of true love. Can you just think about it? So that each person, each child, when they ask their father and mother, yeah, why was I born? Then father and mother would say, you are our biggest present in our life. Yeah? Biggest present from God. Yeah? Something that, like there is nothing more precious than you. And you are fruit of our true love. So you can imagine how many more happy people yeah, would we have on this planet. Because maybe you know, you also have such people in your yeah, surrounding. Uh, I also have some friends or acquaintances who have a different story. Yeah. And sometimes, for example, during a quarrel, they he heard from their parents that actually we didn't want you. We didn't plan you. So you just appeared in our life and it became so difficult. Can you imagine how hard it is for such people? to believe in themselves, to strive for something higher. Yeah, that's why it would be so wonderful if all people in the world yeah, could really take it serious that yes, through true love, through love, children appear 
and they should be loved. And they, they should have all the possibilities to realize their potential in this world. But there is one more aspect connected to love. It is lineage. Uh, now, we have been married with my husband, as Erika also mentioned, for uh, more than 25 years. And actually, now we started thinking already <laughs> about becoming grandparents in the future. How precious this is. And But you know, we, start, we are thinking about it now. This is kind of normal. But can you imagine if also young people, for example, high school children, students, could already start thinking about it. That how they behave now, the way they behave now, they, the way they think now, the choices they make now, they would influence not only their life, not only their partner, and not only their children. All of this would influence the whole lineage, their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren. So if these young people manage to really find themselves in this life, find their true values, if they manage to really uh, create this true love, really achieve this true love, and they can pass it to future generations, how wonderful this would be, yeah? And I think the earlier our young people start thinking about it, the better, that each their action can influence the future in so many people. But the problem is that many people actually want to experience true love in their life, but most people don't know what true love really is. And when I was also a very young girl, for example, 14, 15, or 16 years old, then I also was thinking about love, but I completely didn't know what love was. I had such different ideas, and I remember I was writing different poems about love, but in my imagination, so I was thinking, okay, so someday I'll just, I'll just meet a very handsome boy, and we will have a wonderful romantic uh, time together. We will go to theaters, we will go dating, we will go to cafes and restaurants. He will bring me a lot of flowers. He will carry me in his hands. <laughs> yeah, just all this kind of uh, very beautiful ideas. This is good, yeah, but I didn't know what true love really means. And now after living with my husband uh, for more than 25 years, I can realize that love is really something much deeper. Of course, honestly speaking, we also do have romantic <laughs> and romance yeah, in our life. We do have it. And now, actually, <laughs> recently we had a very interesting situation. We went to a cafe with my husband. And then uh, I just asked him, uh, what kind of, like, what did you used to do before at the beginning of our relationship? that you basically stop doing now. Because, you know, sometimes uh, when people have this kind of love relationship, then oftentimes it happens like this, that at the beginning of the relationship, people invest a lot into this relationship. For example, boys really take care of the girl, bring flowers and uh, kind of bring her to the theater and pay attention. And then the girls also try to do, to look most beautiful for him and to make some presents to him and like that. But then sometimes when people start really living together for years and then they stop investing into each other and they stop doing many things and also they see a kind of very sad result. <laughs> but I was surprised by the answer of my husband actually, because when I asked him this question, he said, oh, can I please rephrase the question? He said, can I maybe mention better those things that I do now that I didn't do before? <laughs> because he said, because now I pay much more attention to you. Now I want to spend more time with you. Now I tell you almost every day that I love you, but I didn't do it before. <laughs> yeah. So now he is doing much more. And I can tell you that uh, now after being together for more than 25 years, we love each other really much more than at our wedding time, yes, at, that at our wedding. This is maybe unusual for some people, but isn't it better than vice versa, when people are so happy together at the beginning and then they have nothing after 20 years? And this just shows that love is really something deeper 
than just happy feelings at the beginning or just romantic feelings or just spending a nice time together. This requires really our effort. And this is what we will try to understand during this uh, presentation. Uh, I really like also um, the book and I like this author. So I'm sure many of you really know and have read also the books by by this very very uh, famous writer so scott peck and i just would, would like to quote one thing of all misconceptions about love the most powerful and pervasive is the belief that falling in love is love or at least one of the manifestations of love because many young people they really have just concepts they want to love and they want it to be beautiful but they just really mistake yes they just really take falling in love for true love and because of this many difficult situations happen many sad situations happen so let's try to understand the difference let's look at some concrete also points in this actually before i uh, got married and before we started uh, our family with my husband i don't know where i heard it but i was really moved uh, and maybe even in some way shocked by one survey that they have heard about so there, there was one survey and um, so people came some sociologists they came uh, to uh, some weddings and they wanted to ask only one question and they asked actually the brides at that time they asked the brides why do you marry so they came up to these beautiful girls and they asked only one question why do you marry? And I don't remember exact numbers, but for example, out of uh, 20 very beautiful brides, so basically uh, 19 answered basically the same, a little bit with, in different words, but the meaning, the essence was the same. Most of them said, I want to marry because I want to be happy. <laughs> Why, why are you asking this? I want to be happy. And out of 20 girls who were asked, only one said, I want to be married in order to make my husband happy. And I remember at that time, I was also very young when I heard it, but I remember that it got stuck in my mind really and in my heart because this was completely different. If I hadn't heard it, Maybe I wouldn't have started thinking about it, but it really struck me at that time. Oh, wow, that's completely different, completely different idea. And can you imagine if two people, a bride and a bridegroom, if two people think like this, but not only say it one time, but really deeply think like this, that I marry in order to make my spouse happy. If so, like this young boy thinks, I really want to make my wife, my future wife, the happiest woman on this planet. And I will do my best. I will keep investing into this. But if also a bride, this beautiful girl thinks, but I also want to do my maximum best to make him the happiest man in this world. Can you imagine what happens in this kind of couple? If they're really serious about it. That's why if you talk about true love, so basically we can say that this is very deep feeling, very deep feeling where thoughts, words, and actions are all focused on the benefit uh, of one other person, benefit and happiness of another person. And this true love, we can say is sacrificial, unchanging, and unconditional. Sometimes when people hear the word sacrificial, they feel, oh, no, 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 I, I don't want to sacrifice anything. I just want to be happy. But it doesn't mean that one person in this kind of relationship will be always happy and another one would always just sacrifice receiving nothing. No, we are talking about relationship where both people really want to invest and live for the sake of other. Where both people really want to bring joy to care, to try to understand, to become better for each other. So let's also explore it a little bit more. 
So when we talk about true love, that it should be unconditional and unchanging. Yeah. Actually, I think this is such a precious thing. Because young people, I, I, I hear many stories, even, you know, because we have, for example, uh, our daughters are now all students. And I also hear many stories, like from their friends and their surroundings. For example, there can be relationship uh, when a young boy, a young girl, they have very good relationship and they really feel they are in love, they are very happy to be with each other and they go on dates and they spend some time in cafe and they go to some museums or theater and she receives flowers. Everything looks very beautiful. But what if after some time, for example, one year passes or maybe half a year and then the boy just says, you know, it used to be uh, so fun with you, but now I don't feel that it's so much fun. Maybe I don't feel that we can just laugh together all the time or we feel so happy all the time. Maybe it was a wrong choice. Maybe we shouldn't stay together or something like that. Yeah, this is a very simple example, but this also happens and it hurts. Yeah. Because true love, it doesn't mean that we are always just happy, 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 and just love and have fun. This means much more, actually. And in a relationship, long-term relationship, different things can happen. And nobody can guarantee that nothing happens to anybody. Yeah. For example, when I was uh, just uh, 21 years old, I went to America. At that time, I was... Uh, a pretty, at least I can't say that, but people said that, that I was a kind of pretty girl, kind of beautiful girl. And then at that time I thought, oh, okay, so maybe someday I'll have my husband, my future husband. And at least when he sees me, maybe hopefully he will think that I'm beautiful and he will love me and like that. Yeah. But uh, what happened, just just a short example, yeah, so that, that we never know what happens and what happens to yeah, any of the partner, yeah? So what happened to me, I just went uh, riding a bike, you know, <laughs> during some free time. And I had a very serious bike accident where basically my face uh, well, basically disappeared. So none of the beautiful face was left because all the skin on my face just was gone. So, because I, I fell down very se severely on my face and can you imagine 21 year girl without face basically and if before that accident i thought okay when i meet my husband surely he will love me maybe he will be proud to go out with me like that then after that accident when i looked at my at uh, in the mirror honestly speaking i saw a, a witch i had never seen anything more terrible than i saw and then my question was in my mind, would there be any person in this world who would be able to love this being that I became? Yeah. So that's why, uh, why I'm saying this, that in order to really uh, start this very serious relationship, maybe even before, beforehand, we need to think seriously because this is a very serious step. And this means if I want to love somebody, if I want to enter this true love relationship, it means I also need to be determined not to give up on this person if something, some uh, difficult situation happens. Yeah. So we never know. Yeah. So I'm determined to still take care. I'm determined to still keep loving, to caring. I also had a situation when my husband, basically, we are still not uh, old people, yeah? So we both turned 50 this year, yeah? But uh, just two years ago, a situation happened to my husband when a very healthy person, just all of a sudden, just all one night, he couldn't walk. Just something happened to his health, I can't, will, will not go into details, but he couldn't even walk properly, he couldn't almost sit properly. He had to use a stick in order to move somewhere. And then we would go to one hospital, another hospital. But if there is true love, what did I feel in my heart? Did I feel, oh, I thought he would be always healthy. 
I thought he would always work hard and take care of me and my family. He would always go for a walk with me. He would always go maybe hiking with me. Yeah, take me to the Black Sea or something like that. What did I feel at that time? Actually, I didn't feel any resentment or any bad feelings. I just felt, okay, I just want to love you more <laughs> so that you can recover more quickly. And actually, I remember my feelings. I even felt joy going with him together uh, to the hospital or to some other places. I felt, yeah, that this is a chance for me yeah, to really express my love more, to let him feel that my love is really unconditional. I will always be with him. And actually a miracle happened in our family that my husband, I think after five months, months just completely recovered. <laughs> yeah, of course, we were very lucky, but we don't know how situation goes. Yeah, that's why I'm just talking about this determination, because if we are ready to do, to be this kind of person for our partner, can't we be happy if this partner, our partner is also ready to be the same person for us so that we know whatever happens, whatever happens with me, I won't be alone. I won't be abandoned. My partner will be with me. My partner will keep loving me. And when we become older, like elderly people, yeah, it's so wonderful, yeah? If my uh, husband's love doesn't depend on my appearance, if my husband doesn't feel, oh, okay, I married this beautiful girl, and until she stays this kind of beautiful girl, I will keep loving her. <laughs> Do you want to have such a husband? I don't. And for me, it's very precious when my husband tells me, it, Every year or basically every day, he says, I love you and I will always love you. And I will be happy to become elderly people together with you. Uh, last, Not last month, maybe three or four months ago, I went to some uh, holiday house with my mother and I just saw one very old couple, I can say, elder. I don't know how old they were, maybe 80. And they were just, no, there was some music. And they were just dancing together in the corner, very quietly, just dancing together, expressing love to each other. How beautiful this is. Yeah. And that's why I think for young people, uh, it is very important to understand that true love, even if years goes by, even if something happened, true love doesn't disappear. True love can become only stronger. And this is beautiful. That's why the components of mature love, true love, this is not only emotions. This means intellect, emotions, and will. I call it, honestly speaking, I call it commitment. Not only I, I think some yeah, people who are married can really agree with me. Yeah? Commitment. That not only I will be with you, if I feel good with you, it means I have determination to stay with you whatever happens. I stay, I, I want to stay with you even if we face some difficulties. I want to stay with you even if somebody gets sick, yeah? Or if I, we don't have fun, but we will look for this fun, yeah? We will look for some joyful moments. We will keep investing into each other. And will, this means that I'm not only, I will not only think like this, I will make action. I will determine to make action. I will determine to keep investing into this relationship. I will research more. Maybe I will read some more books together with you, yeah? In order to find a way to become a better husband for you or better wife for you. But in falling in love, as you understand, mostly this is emotions. Okay, I feel good being with you. Oh, I like your appearance. You're so handsome. Oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, when I go out with you, I feel proud. I can show my beautiful girl in front of my friends. Yeah. I feel so good about it. Yeah. I feel comfortable. But as you can understand, emotions are not eternal. Or positive emotions. We, we can't guarantee that this positive emotions will stay with us all the time. Yeah. That's why if in falling in love, the most important thing is that what I feel 
and I will stay with you as long as I feel good and comfortable with you, you understand that this is not eternal relationship because it will end for sure. And just one point I would like to mention. If in this kind of situation, when people just feel comfortable with each other, just like each other, just feel good with each other, if at this point, without commitment, without serious commitment to dedicate their life to each other, without the commitment to take responsibility for each other and for their future, if during this time they have sexual relationship, you can understand how painful this is when this relationship fall apart. And I have met so many young girls, also boys, but sometimes girls, they really have pain and they want to share at least with somebody, you know. And sometimes uh, children, they can't share with parents because they are just afraid that they can be punished or scolded, that they make mistakes. And that's why when some just outside person even comes to school or college, just some invited person who comes for one time, then sometimes uh, young people, they just want to share something what is in their heart. And you know what I have heard very often from young people, especially from young girls after such lectures or especially after there is one presentation, maybe if you like, we can share it with you later. It's called Love and Sexuality. And then after that presentation, many times presentation, many times I got, you know, like a notice written uh, by some girl with such words. Where have you been before? Why has why has nobody told us about this before? And then they share their story. And one of the stories was, for example, last year, out of curiosity, I entered sexual relationship and now I feel really broken. I feel no hope. Yeah? That's why it's very important to explain to young people that in these relationships, they even can't understand what kind of person is close to them. They don't see this person. They see this person through, you know, I don't know if there is this expression in English too, like through pink glasses, yeah? Because this is their imagination, because they want to love. They want to be in love. And when two people come on date, you know how I imagine it? They don't show their real self. They show their best version of themselves, how they want to present themselves. It's like when people don't stand on their feet properly, but they stand just, you know, on this, how do you call it? On the toes, yeah? Trying to become higher, not trying to look better. But you can't stand like this all the time. Impossible. Someday they will stand on feet as usual. And then they can see the reality. Oh, wow. Is it a person whom I thought I loved? Yeah. So before entering any very serious relationship, it's so important to get to know this person. Not only like the appearance, but to get to know the inner world. Yeah? What kind of person this is. How this person behaves not only with me, but maybe how this person behaves with, like, in relationship with his parents, or maybe siblings, or maybe other people. What kind of person is this yeah, inside? And today, yeah, I was also thinking about this lecture. And I just had this realization, of course, it, it is not new, but it kind of struck me that actually there is no such a being, such a human being in the world with whom you can always feel easy and comfortable all the time without making effort. Of course, we want it. Young people want to have such a partner and I will always feel easy and comfortable. I will always feel happy, happy, happy. Maybe I will disappoint somebody, but actually this is not possible because we are people and we have our good moments and bad moments. Sometimes we are happy, sometimes we are sad. Yeah, sometimes we need just to be comforted in some situation. That's why love is really something much deeper than just falling in love. So I'll try to go quickly so that I can uh, finish <laughs> and on time. Yeah. And then that's why true love really requires determination and consistent effort. It means when we stop investing, for example, if this person stops trying, stops holding on, stops making effort, this person will fall for sure. No way that he can just hold on without making effort. Same in the relationship, in the true love relationship. This relationship will grow only if you keep investing. Also, it's like with the fire, yeah? If you stop putting wood into the fire, that's it, yeah? It will disappear after some time. 
That's why if we want our love to grow, we need to make constant and not only monthly effort, we need to make everyday effort, yeah, in order for this love to really grow. And I, here there is just one quote from a Russian uh, writer, very famous writer, uh, Mikhail Prishvin. He said, love is quiet and speaks through action, yeah. It doesn't mean that we don't need to say I love you, no. <laughs> It's very good to say I love you, but if we only say I love you, but we don't express our love through real action, this is not true love, yeah? That's why, yeah, true love is really action, doing something for our partner, changing for better. And it means also growing spiritually for this person, not only spiritually, but also externally, learning some skills. I can share just quickly, I was one time at one conference, it was actually a women's conference. And then there was one a young girl and she just stood up and she said, uh, I, I'm married. So basically we are newly, newly married couple. And she just shared a little bit about her experience. But what kind of struck me, she said, you know, I'm a person who can't cook and I don't want to learn to cook at all. And I think my husband just needs to accept it because I'm this kind of person. If he loves me, he just needs to accept it. Honestly speaking, maybe some people here will even disagree with me, but I think if we love somebody, we just need to learn to be better for this person. Uh, when I got married, I also couldn't uh, cook at all, honestly speaking. <laughs> I couldn't cook at all because all my life I was dancing, singing, and then giving lectures and teaching languages. But uh, really, I didn't have any chance to learn to cook. That's why when I started family and I moved to my husband, I couldn't cook at all, but I just said, okay, <laughs> I will just start learning from zero. I will learn to cook for my husband to be able to bring joy. Yeah. Also, if some man, for example, maybe he can't do anything about the house. Maybe he is more hmm, just a person who, uh, for example, is very artistic and he just has like, or, or he writes books. So just he is in this kind of more spiritual world. And maybe he does, can't do anything about the house. Uh, then if he loves his wife, maybe he can just learn some things. Yeah? And we can both, both the sides can learn some skills to become better for each other, to bring more joy. And that's why the main question in, in the true love relationship is, what can I do for you? Even if you don't say it, but if you think about it, what could I do today for my spouse? to make him happy or to make her happy, to see her smile. Yeah? And if, if this goes from two sides, I think this love will never vanish. And that's why in true love, people really pay more attention also to the inner world. It doesn't mean that appearance is not important. You know, there are also such wives sometimes <laughs> that before getting married, they are very beautiful, they take care of themselves. But after getting married, they feel, okay, my husband should just love me, love me as I am. And they stop uh, paying attention to the appearance, like wearing uh, very not nice <laughs> clothes. <laughs> yeah. So this is also not a good thing. Yeah. Because if we love our husband, we need to try to do our best to be beautiful for him because this also brings joy to him. But still, people more, pay more attention to the inner aspect. And here there are just two pictures of two couples, it's like one person is completely blind, but you see they see they have twins and really wonderful children. And, and in another couple also, she married him already when he was uh, in a wheelchair. Yeah. And his former wife just abandoned him, yeah, left him. But now they also have wonderful children. So everything is possible if there is true relationship. And just as this is almost last last point. Yeah. And you, you already know it that and I feel it in our relationship with my, my husband very, very much. So not those people are happy who always look at each other, but those who look in one direction. If we can together do something for the world, we can be really happier. Because if uh, in love, in true love, we both can be kind of independent and self-sufficient people, you know, like strong people who can give love to each other and together we can do something for the society and this can enrich our relationship. But in falling in love, you know, many times uh, young people say, 
oh, okay, I love you, it means you always need to be with me, you need to pay more attention to me, you need to look only at me, and like that, and they feel so much kind of resentment, yeah, when this is not like that. But this is not true relationship, yeah. That's why, yeah, it's very important to be really mature in this relationship. And I won't stop on, on this, uh, this kind of slide for a long time, but when people love truly, they are able to overcome conflicts and difficulties. My husband is also a psychologist and he created such a course, just a funny name. Uh, the, the name of the course was, is there life after conflict? And actually there is life after conflict. And people who truly love each other, they can find a way to each other. And I usually end this presentation for young people with this kind of words that I feel are important because sometimes they worry too much. Okay, where can I find this true love? How can I find this true love? But I tell them, you know, the priority, the first thing maybe to think of is what kind of person am I? Am I ready for this relationship? Am I good enough to meet the best and the most wonderful person in my life? Yeah, that's why this kind of message, yeah, true love will find you when your heart and actions deserve it. Yeah, so that's why with this I would like to finish. Sorry, maybe I went a little bit over time. It's a little bit difficult yeah, to fit it into 30 minutes. But uh, I really appreciate your attention and I wish all of you so that your relationship with your spouses or with your future spouses can keep growing every month, every year, so that you can feel happier and happier. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Wow. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, what can I do for you? That question like, is a great question and it struck me mm, in a different way. Um, and it's something that we should uh, all of us think about in our daily lives. Thank you, Mrs. Olga, for your insightful presentation. It was really inspiring. And uh, right now we will move on to the questions and answer session. So please feel free to raise your hand or type your questions in the chat box. Um, I saw that some of you made some comments and uh, they were really beautiful. Um, yeah, so let's dynamize this a little bit. Anyone who has questions, who wants to give their opinion, their feedback is really important. Okay, I see Marcia. Um, I think you can mute. You can unmute yourself. Yes, now. Uh, yes, thank you, Olga. It was beautiful. Uh, it's a beautiful material, actually, talking about uh, true love and what it is, and uh, you do it in a in a fresh way. It's really beautiful to listen to you. And uh, I just wanted to ask you if you have tried, because what I understand is that you may use this material with children or teenagers at schools, right? Have you tried using it with uh, young adults or with adults? Yes, uh, I was sometimes invited to uh, colleges or even some universities, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is, I think, yeah, very good also for, for, even I think this material can be used for uh, young couples who have just started their family life. So yeah, mm -hmm. not to yeah. talk about, because also even I couldn't fit everything into this uh, short uh, presentation. Usually it's a little bit longer, like about 40, 40, 40 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Very beautiful. Thank you very much. Yeah. Also, thank you very much, Erika. You are really wonderful MC. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Marcia. Thank you, Olga. Um, does anyone else wants to question? Uh, you can also share your feedback, um, your opinion on this matter. Uh, it's also welcome. Um, well, people are thinking maybe, can I just say just a few things? Like mm -hmm. One point maybe. Yeah. That is, uh, so we, uh, this uh, material is based, uh, as Eric already mentioned, on the uh, materials of International Foundation, 
International Educational Foundation, but we also, as Women Federation, we uh, kind of upgraded it a little bit or adjusted it a little bit to different also age groups. And of course, when we give this material, it depends on the age. Yeah. So sometimes, like the examples that we use, or materials are a little bit different. But there are several uh, lectures like that, uh, and I just feel that it's very precious when we can just talk. Uh, to children very openly and of course when it's in the class it is not one way just lecture you know like not when one lecturer is just standing and talking so usually this is conversation so we keep asking questions to uh, children all the time or students and they respond and sometimes it is so amazing i am oftentimes amazed by the responses because children can really learn from each other so when they say say something i just wanted to mention that yeah Thank you. And as children can learn from each other, uh, as do we, adult, adults. Um, and we got a question from Betty. What do you say to the young people who feel pain or wanted after a broken relationship? Thank you, Betty. Yeah. Uh, what, what do we say after a broken relationship? Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want me yeah. to read it again? Yeah, it's okay. I think I understood uh, the meaning. Uh, so basically, what we say uh, to to uh, even even before they write their reflections, because because after the, each presentation, after each talk, we ask um, uh, you know, students or children to write honestly their reflections. That's why I always tell them. So you don't have to write your name, but sometimes they do, but they don't have to, yeah, because we want them to write honestly what they really feel. But uh, and uh, but even before they write their reflections, in which sometimes we really see their pain, so we already say, uh, for example, in the lecture that is called love and sexuality, then we already say that there are some cases, yeah, when there is pain, and sometimes people even are so much hurt that they don't want to keep going and they don't want to be hurt again. But uh, many times this kind of pain happens because people just didn't know. Yeah. For example, even those girls who entered those sexual relationship very early without being truly loved, they just didn't know. And nobody can blame them for that. Nobody had told them before. And that's why we always try to give hope that actually they can make a new start and they can really start preparing for a new relationship, but very seriously, yeah? can prepare their heart, can work on themselves with the hope to meet a true person in the future yeah so we always try to uh, not just kind of scare them with some consequences but always try to give hope yeah and encourage them yeah. and sometimes it happened even that after such lecture for example especially love and sexuality it happens that after such lecture some for example girl of the age like 15 year old girl for example would come to me and said can i please talk to you and of course, I need to ask permission from the principal of the school, yeah, or vice director. And if they give me permission, and usually they do, so I just talk to her in some other room. And oftentimes it happens that the girl would just start crying and would share her story. And this is so important that these children can open their heart and there could be somebody at least who can just listen and can just embrace them and tell them, it's not your fault. You really didn't know. But something very good is awaiting you yeah just let's let's try to make a new start yeah and of course uh, it's very sad and that's why we need to give these lectures also to for parents because sometimes some parents are really too strict and children are too much afraid to talk to their parents and this should be changed yeah so children should always feel that whatever happens in their lives because sometimes they make mistakes yeah people make mistakes yeah but children, all children should feel that whatever happened in their lives, they can share with their parents. And parents will be on their side and parents will do their best to support them, to help them, to comfort them and to help them to go through yeah, this difficult situation. Yeah, that's why this is kind of not work that can be one sided, you know, you know, like only we give lectures to children and all the problems can be solved. It's not like that. Yeah, that's why the most efficient way is also to talk to parents, to children and it's very important to talk uh, or to give this kind of material to teachers because, uh, as you know, we are not kind of almighty. Yeah? 
and we can't reach all the children. That's why we would be happy to uh, share this material with teachers and if they have this kind of passion also in their heart yeah, to help people, then it would be good if they can use this material also in their schools. Yeah. Just. Thank you so much, Olga, and thank you so much, Betty, for your question. We have another question from Sam. Um, uh, you would like to know uh, if true love as a positive spiritual element to it, please. Could I maybe read it because I couldn't get true love? I didn't hear no. the end of the question. Could you please repeat it? If true love as a positive spiritual element to it. Hmm. If there is a positive spiritual element? Yeah, true love, yeah. No, of course, I think that basically the whole lecture basically was about it, but without a uh, spiritual aspect to true love, I don't think anything is possible. Oh, I think that's uh, Marta, did you want to say? Eu estou bem, só que hoje andei muito bem agitada, como sempre, não é? Just, just, Marta, excuse me, could you please? Agora estou aqui num zoom, mas não há problema. Can you unmute yourself, please? Um, Marta, excuse me, please. Então, chegaste? Ok, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, <that's, laughs> things happen, it's ok. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, I, I absolutely agree with that. And without uh, this kind of internal, uh, very serious attitude towards true love, it is not possible. Of course, uh, people are different here, even in, in the Zoom, there are people, for example, who believe in God, who don't believe in God. People are so different. For my couple, I can say, uh, for us, this was a very serious commitment to each other in front of God. For us, it was like that, you know? And uh, because, honestly speaking, when some of our friends look at our couple, many, even now, many of our friends say, oh, this family, they're just lucky. They're just lucky. They, it's so easy for them. Such They call us, oh, this is the most romantic couple we, we have known. <laughs> it's just lucky. But honestly speaking, we also went through such a difficult course. Yeah. And for seven years, my husband didn't tell me that he loved me. Can you imagine? I would ask him, do you love me? He said, I will tell you later. <laughs> I'm not ready to tell you this. For seven years. I was waiting for these words, but now he keeps, keeps saying it every day, yeah? And that's why without this kind of spiritual element, as you said, yeah, for us, and for us, it was our relationship with God. For us, it would be not possible to keep going, you know, because sometimes it was very, very difficult, yeah? But now I really feel that he is a person, I, I can't even imagine any other person besides me. I'm so grateful that he, this particular person is my husband, yeah? A person whom I can trust most, and I'm really happy with him. Yeah, <laughs> like that. Yeah, I don't know thank if I can answer the question. Um, thank you so much for your answer. I think it was great. Um, we don't have more questions. Uh, I don't know if anyone else in the Zoom wants to make a question. But if not, we have, um, you received yes, some like feedback, Olga. Uh, and I think it would be important for us to um, hear a little bit about what they thought during your uh, presentation. So from uh, Dr. Jana, uh, she wrote, hello everyone, it is amazing to be here. Thanks to Patricia and Dave, David Healy um, for the invitation. Love and emotion take it for, taken for granted, a word often misused and mostly um, misrepresented, underrated, I dare say. Love, in my opinion, needs to be established as love and not lust, infatuation, or simply being fond of the other pe person or being. Requirements of which I believe paramount should be, should be that love be mutual nurtured. Friendship, which precedes love, should be a standard basis, in my opinion, and experience of decades. Thank you for this session. I thought to share my experience of decades. Bless you all. Thank you so much, Dr. Jana. That was amazing. Thank you. Very much. Also... Somebody could take a photo because I couldn't see any comments yet during the lecture. It would be very great. Ooh. But it seems Emika san would like to say something. I just see her on the screen. <laughs> like oh, comments. Thank you so much for inviting. My guest couldn't come. It's really pity. I was so inspired to your clear, um, how can I say, concept about how can I say the marriage. 
And because you substantiated your marriage to be happy, and that's why very powerful. For me, 41 years old, one year anniversary coming in the 40, 40, 40th of October, 41 years. We love each other. And for me, my husband is the best friend. And my husband say, still saying every day, I love you. So, but I cannot give back so much love to him. This is my problem, but he knows I love him very much. And uh, three things actually, um, my son recently, um, last year broke his marriage after three, four years. So it's made, uh, my, I mean, his parents and me and my husband and also has his sister broke their heart and they are international marriage, but they loved each other very much, very much. That's why I loved her parents too. So marriage is not just for themselves, I believe, for family. You uh, commented lineage is also important, but also marriage is related with family, each uh, partner's family. So if bound together, family support completely, it's a help a lot. So even my son broke his marriage, now he's with us in Germany together to live. So now he's restoring and uh, kind of come back, come back to original himself. So I think he should not give up, but he loved this person. So I think it's painful as parents, but the international marriage is not easy. Yes. So one bus you commented about, I like your comment about love is not each other to love, look at each other. I think I, I remember this verse. First of all, when I met my husband, I really determined this is it. We must look for same direction, for one common purpose to live and live together. So it goes to eternity. This I believe still. So we fight each other every day, even now, but we go to same direction. So that's why we can solve in three days if we fight each other. And recently I went also to Cyprus and I've realized Cyprus is really family oriented. So I really love it. My daughter is living there. And when I went there, they welcome us <laughs> even. You know why? Because <laughs> Yes, yes, I was in Russia too. So I felt like common things. His nation in the family, orient, oriented with family, it's, they help each other. This is so beautiful, I think. So I want to create family level, kind of family oriented, you know, you know like marriage and of the family extended. So I'm so appreciated today's orientation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Nico. Just as Erika mentioned, could you could I please uh, ask again? Uh, for us, it would be very precious to receive some feedback because even here I couldn't see any comments. But just what you feel and uh, maybe how you think it could be useful in your country, because of course, yeah, for us it would be very precious if more young people can just uh, yeah receive it. And of course, each lecturer, like for example, if you give your the lecture, then you will uh, use different examples. Yeah, so you will use your personal example, and each lecturer, of course, adds yeah something and ma makes it even better. Yeah, this is very precious. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Olvi, and thank you for all the participants that actively participated and all of you that came here um, uh, to hear this beautiful presentation. Um, and for those who didn't have the opportunity to share your feedback, or uh, if you want to question Mrs. Olga, we'll leave the um, contacts in the chat group. We'll leave the email that I'll send right now and the WhatsApp number uh, so that you can share with our questions or even your feedback that it's really important for us to also improve in the next presentations. Um, I truly hope that through this session, all of us here present could gain clarity on the fundamental distin distinctions between true love and infatuation. And now it's our responsibility to keep exploring the, trans to the transformative power of love in building harmonious relationships, as we learned uh, through Mrs. Olga 
practical strategies for nurturing love, respect, and understanding. Let's all of us here present deepen our understanding on the role of moral education in creating a more compassionate and just society and pass that on to the people around us. I would like to thank uh, once more our speaker for our, uh, her amazing words and all these contents that she gladly shared with us. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Alga, once more. And also a big thank you for all of you participants here present. Um, and for the organization of this event uh, also. Thank you, Miti. Um, and lastly, let me announce that our next lecture uh, is already um, set to be on this December 7th at 7 p.m. Central European time um, with the topic love and sexuality. We hope to see you all there. Uh, thank you for joining us today and have a wonderful picture. evening. Yeah. What? Erika, can we take a picture all together? I took one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because I, took, I, I took already. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Because people maybe didn't turn on the cameras. Maybe somebody wants to be in the picture. Okay. Can yeah. turn on the camera? Let's, let's do that again. Then. <laughs> oh, let's see how beautiful it is. <laughs> okay, if everyone puts their cameras on, and I'll take a quick photo. Okay, after three, one, two, three. One more, oh, big smiles, one, two, three. Oh gosh, sorry. <laughs> okay, okay, one, two, three. Super. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I was, as I was saying, thank you for joining us today and have a wonderful evening. I wish you all great success in developing your relationships. Thank, thank you, you so much. Bye. Thank you very thank much, you. Erica. Me too. Thank you so much, and everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all. Everybody for joining. Thank you so much, Olga. Thank you. Thank you very much, Olga. Thank you very much, Erica. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Please join next time, yeah? 7th of December. Yes. Okay, take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.